Greetings chess fans, my name is Artur Nekšans, I'm the leading Latvian drummaster and I'm continuing the video series about explaining some of the most important chess concepts in under 10 minutes so that you eventually become the better player. In the very first episode I talked about the ready opening, how to build yourself a simple to play opening and you can just go out there and start to play it in 10 minutes but it is also very close to the king's in an attack because sometimes the red team immediately goes into the realm of the king's in an attack. So the king's in an attack normally starts with knight of 3, d5, g3, knight of 6, bishop g2 and e6. This is the most popular setup at, the, at least at the club level. So you want to play short castle and now play d3. So black here normally plays short castle, you want to play knight e2 and let's say black plays c5. So you're going to check all kinds of databases or most popular games, very often the players go exactly here. So you're going to play e4, knight c6 and rook e1. So in a nutshell, your idea is to play e5. You want to close the center to go for a king's attack because it's one of the rules. In order to be successful with a king's attack, you want to close the center so that your opponent cannot go for a counterattack. You lock the center and then good things will happen at one of the flanks. So here black typically could play something like b6. Now we close the center. We play knight f1, freeing the bishop on c1. And out of bishop b7, now this is a very important move, h4. So with the move h4, not only we free the h2 square for the knight, so you want to put your knight on g4, your bishop on f4, and you can see you have so many pieces at the king side, and this king doesn't have a lot of great defenders. And now after queen c7, now you protect the pawn on e5 with bishop f4. In case you're wondering what's the difference, why not bishop f4 immediately? This is a common mistake because black can play g5, hit your bishop, let's say you go back, and after g4, the knight retreats. I don't know where, but the problem is the pawn on e5 falls. You see two knights are attacking it and you can't protect it. So that's why this move h4 is really important. Black could go here, you protect the pawn. And let's say black is not really aware there's any danger. He plays rook c8, you play knight h2, you play either knight g4 immediately here, or you play h5, you want to play h6. Um, let me just show you some random lines. h6, here, knight g4, here, here, I'm putting the bishop on g5, I'm training the dogs with bishops, and my big idea, if black is like completely oblivious of what I'm planning, I just want to give a mate. Essentially, this is the core idea that you're trying to exploit the weakened dark squares the black has at a king side. And black usually has this tough question, how to meet this move h5? Because if he meets it himself with h6, now you have the core idea to play knight g4 and try to sacrifice something on h6. So I'm talking about most like, let's say, you're playing queen d2 and you're already thinking about bishop h6 or knight h6, queen h6. You still have a lot of pieces that the king side to hope for a successful attack. That's why this is looking really unpleasant for black. And black at some point somehow tries to react to this. Let's say after h4 he plays f6 or f5, you almost always take it. You almost always take on f6. This creates weakness on e6 and a potential outpost on e5 for you to exploit. Now let's go back here and try to understand what else can happen. Sometimes you are playing really smart players and they're not going to uh, rush with a short castle. So they could play like c5, they could play knight c6, and now they're playing b6. And you're probably wondering, what is the big deal? I'm still going to continue the same idea, right? Well, not quite. Because after rook e1, queen c7, you see the black king has not castled short just yet. And this means he maybe is not casting short at all. So if you rush with e5 and you play queen e2, your opponent might go for a sudden surprise counterattack at the king's side with g5. Remember this maneuver. g5, g4, hitting the pawn in e5. Black would even go bishop b7, long castle, followed by h5, g4, and suddenly your king's side is the one where your opponent is attacking, while for you it's much more difficult to organize something in the queen's side. So that's why the key idea to remember if your opponent is smart he is delaying uh, where he places the king you can improve your threats like queen e2 c3 knight f1 and keep the center intact do not close it before your opponent has defined where he places the king 
Uh, obviously, there's a couple of other setups that you have to know when you're playing the Kings in an attack. Uh, you can uh, reach the same position also with g6. At the point of this g6, your opponent could start with either knight of 6, g6, bishop g7, then he could play d5, reach the same position, but this is not really that effective than with the pawn on e6. So normally this setup works really great when your opponent has the pawns on d5 and e6. This is where kings didn't attack looks really good. So you can still do the same idea. You're playing e4, you're playing rook e1, but now you see this move e5 might no longer be working because let's say black does something like this, which is of course completely ridiculous. The pawn on e5 now is hit too many times, you cannot protect it. But you could think about how to improve it. Maybe you play c3, then you want to play e5, you want to play d4, same idea all over again. Knight f1, h4, knight h2, knight g4, h5, etc. Start as kings at attack. That's why kings in an attack is such a popular weapon at any levels. And also it goes without saying, it's a very popular system, you can even start with e4 as well. So if you are a big fan of e4, you can still get your kings in attack wipes as well. The point is, let's say your opponent plays the French defense. So you're playing d3, d5, guess what? You're playing knight e2. Your opponent plays c5, you play knight of 3, and now we go, there you go, g3, bishop g2, show castle, rook e1, e5, etc. You get the point, right? It also can happen from the Sicilian... Uh, um, a Paulson. After knight of three, your opponent plays e6. Some people are annoyed with this very sharp opening. You play d3. I mean, obviously, your opponent doesn't really have to play d5, but most people, they do play d5. Now you play knight e2, you avoid a queen trade, and there you go. We again transpose to the same position. And finally, sometimes even against uh, some other setups like uh, the Caro, after e4, c6, a d4, a d3, d5, knight e2. If your opponent plays, let's say, knight of 6, knight of 3, and g6, you can still play the same setup with g3, bishop g2, show castle, rook e1, e5, and again employ the same ideas of the kings in an attack. Finally, I would like to say that I have written a chessable course on this. You can go check it out. Um, I released it last year if i remember correctly it's not a very big one but it deals with all the core ideas and also i have recorded a full length french kings in an attack uh boot camp it's available here on youtube channel you can go and check it out it's usually a bit more advanced than this one so this is like a simpler idea at least maybe you see it you're like oh i want to play the kings in attack this looks fun so if you like it go check it out the full version of the french kings in attack video and of course if you like the video please don't forget to press like write your comments what you think about it and please consider subscribing to my channel thank you for watching arthur signing out